Ode to Bread. Beautiful bread comes in all shapes and sizes and fills us with wonder as it rises. As a kid, I collected it from the shop when it was not yet sliced, but a golden high top. It was like a precious item that I carried with care from the shop to our home where it went to the table. Pride of place on the breadboard, bread knife by its side. Kids could not touch it, and believe me, we tried. <laughs> Sometimes with the half loaf, we'd eat out the middle. Fluffy and doughy, it just felt so special. Of course there'd be trouble, but that world inside the freshest of loaves was something we found totally irresistible. Whether for brekkie, lunch or dinner, it had to have its friend along. Without it, bread was nothing. Butter made it a hero, brought it truly into song. Not everyone needs the butter, mind you, to bring their bread to life. In Europe, they tear it up and dip it in whatever comes along. Old Aussies take their slice of bread and smother butter on it. They eat their meal and mop up the gravy with the precious slice of moppet. What is it that bread actually does? It seems to adhere to the insides, to fill that great hole of hunger that goes right to our soul. No such effect as sayo or a crusket. A piece of crusty, fluffy dough has substance and love to it. I am truly caught in its wonder. <clears throat> it has me in its sights. When I bring home a loaf, it calls to me to come to it and cut another slice to lather it with butter, as it tastes so damn nice. Nowadays, it's sourdough that has the market covered. It's full of holes that make one wonder how it's come to steal the other's thunder. It's heavy and healthier, they say, but for that, of course, we have to pay. And when it comes, when it calls to me so loudly, the price is even greater. My weight goes up with every slice, the day after, no later. How do I remove myself from that great holy substance to stop it calling loudly to every corner of the house? I slice it all, I bag it up and pop it in the freezer. But from there, its voice is muffled. Not entirely silenced, is it either? Especially late at night, it seems to get quite shrill, calling from its frozen place to come and get the thrill of toasting it and smothering it in slabs of golden butter. I don't know how to resist its charm, even though I know it's doing me harm. I think I may have to banish it, to put it in its rightful place, in someone else's lovely home or face. Surely from there I will be safe. But what of my happiness when I want it for a meal? There won't be any there to be had. How on earth am I going to feel? Grief will overcome me, and none of that gluten-free stuff is likely to make up for the loss. Will I turn into one who just doesn't give a toss? Or worse still, one of those picky people who can't eat this and can't eat that, who advocate paleo, no flour and no sugar, who drive us all mad with this kind of fad. I'd love to keep it simple and eat what nature provides without being fussy and asking for hmm on the side. But my craving for the white stuff is taking over my life, making me grow fatter with every excess bite. I may have to give it up and join the ranks of those who have issues to get more particular, to plan what I eat, to find other solutions. Won't that be a feat? Can I really do it? Give up that glorious food that nourishes the whole planet? I can't be that radical, damn it. Cut down the bread and potatoes, said the old folks, and the experts are new. Eating in moderation has to be the path for you. So you don't buff up any further and become the butt of the nation. For you hopeless fatties, we advocate this as the best solution. I just fear if I don't get my bread, I will certainly feel very needy. With time, however, I'll get over that and no longer feel so greedy. Time to eat with moderation. Time to groove. Yes, it's time. It's time for freedom. It's time for moving. 
It's time to begin. Yes, it's time. Time to leave those, those fears behind me. Time to move. Yes, it's